Um, you know, $43 billion. That was the number back on April 27th, I think it was, when you originally announced this deal, uh, T-Mobile and Sprint, of 2018, by the way. $43 billion in synergies, $26 billion of that from the network side. Uh, is that number still the same? Is that, which was the driving force behind so much of why you wanted to do this, still in play as the key number? Can you believe it? You just said the date, April 28th of 2018. This has been such a journey. Uh, yes, that's still the number. You know, we've had eight quarters of blockbuster results during the pendency of this merger of T-Mobile, and nothing's changed in our long-term thesis. This is about bringing together these two companies and the uniquely positioned assets of the two to unlock the potential of massive scale and invest that the synergies from that massive scale into creating the world's best 5G network. And yeah, you know, the network portion of it is $26 billion in our forecast over the long haul. We see $43 billion in total opportunity. So all of the potential that we saw when we announced this continues to be what we see in it. And that's why we've pursued it so ambitiously during the long, long pendency of this deal. Yeah. Uh, well, of course, a lot has changed very recently in terms of the landscape for the U.S. economy. You did focus so much, uh, well, you and, of course, John Ledger, Marcella Claré, in arguing for why this deal should be approved on 5G, on your ability to bring it throughout the country, offer speeds to which we've not seen. How much of the current economic crisis uh, is going to impact the ability to bring 5G to the country and perhaps even more importantly, the ability of people to actually buy the uh, new handsets they're going to need to access this service? Well, in many ways, what it impacts first and foremost is the importance of what we do. You know, one thing we've learned uh, or, or certainly has been reinforced for us is that the service we bring to the American public is essential. Um, you know, as we're socially distanced, the technology that brings us together is more important to us than ever. And consumers will prioritize spending in this category if they need to. I can tell you this, this crisis is going to be short-lived, um, but we'll return to some sort of normal after it. What that normal looks like, though, nobody knows. It's certainly going to be a different normal than the one that we had before entering the crisis. Uh, if that normal is a normal where more Americans uh, are under tougher economic circumstances and have tighter budgets and have to make more choices, we're going to be here to serve them. We're going to be here perhaps as the best positioned player to serve them. If you've got a tight budget, you want value. And that's what the new T-Mobile thesis has always been about, breaking down that, that trade-off that customers have been forced to make in this category since the beginning of time. Do you want better value or do you want the best network? Pick one. This merger is about creating a company that says very emphatically, you can have both. And I think in the circumstances that we'll, we'll most likely find ourselves in economically when this crisis abates, that's going to be a message that will be very important for the American public. But Mike, how quickly can you put those Sprint Spectrum assets that you now own in your network uh, to deliver these 5G speeds that obviously are one of the keys to why regulators approve the deal? Very quickly. You know, our team, Neville Ray and John Saw and teams have had a long time during the pendency of this merger to plan the network. Um, you, we will start lighting up 5G on what was Sprint Spectrum almost immediately, and we'll keep you informed as we do that. Uh, that'll start to benefit consumers who came from both sides of this business immediately. And, you know, so that's, that's one of the, uh, you know, I guess, benefits of the long pendency of the mergers that we've had some time to plan it and we'll be able to start bringing those benefits. You asked earlier whether the crisis will affect that. And, you know, it might. It might in permitting and, and other things uh, as governments are, are around the country, local municipalities are operating at less than their usual capacity. But it won't slow us down. You know, we've been classified uh, by the Department of Homeland Services and the administration as essential services. Uh, we are allowed to continue operating. And we've determined from the network standpoint that we can do that safely. Uh, much of the work tower by tower happens by uh, crews, individual crews of one person. Sometimes it's three, four, or five people that arrive in separate cars, work outdoors, and, and work at a safe distance from each other. So we're planning to proceed. Um, you know, it's, it's essential for the American public we get this network built, and we've determined we can do it safely. So other than some issues around permitting and things like that, um, we don't see a slowdown in our ability to bring this network to bear. 
But what about a slowdown in sales, Mike? I mean, you've got like like all your competitors, uh, eighty percent or so of your company-owned stores are closed. Uh, I would have to imagine that's impacting sales, or is that being made up for online? It certainly is. You know, on March seventeenth, we issued an eight K saying that we felt that the impacts of this crisis would be material, and they will be. Um, what I'll say is that they'll be material but short-lived. Uh, remember. You know, yes, we've got, you know, I guess pro forma to combine now about 75 percent of our stores closed. Um, and that has an impact, of course, a major one on sales. Um, but so does the rest of the industry. And in the grand scheme of things, if it's a few weeks or some low single digit of months where we're prioritizing the safety of our customers and our people, um, that's something we're, we're well positioned to get through. You know, this is this is a recurring revenue business where people have an ongoing subscription and we're the value player in this market. So we're here to serve them. We think over the long haul, while there may be a material short-term impact, um, nothing in our thesis is unchanged. And the potential we've been talking about on this merger all along is as exciting as ever. Uh, Mike, Jim, good, uh, so glad you called in. Hi, Jim. I'm, I'm trying to figure out that, you know, John Ledger always made me so excited about, about you guys. And uh, he did have a kind of a different style, let's say that. Uh, but one of the things that, it, that I'm trying to figure out is if I'm a Sprint customer, why should I necessarily go with T-Mobile? What kind of proposition are you giving me that makes it so that I shouldn't go to Verizon? Well, it's about having the best network and the best value. It's about not having to pick, Jim. You know, this, this market, as I was telling David, has always made people pick. And, you know, Verizon claims to have the best network. Um, that, that's something that they're going to be scrambling to try to talk about as we build the world's best 5G network with the combined assets of this company. So what we're going to be able to offer T-Mobile and Sprint customers and AT&T and Verizon and big cable customers is the best value and the best network simultaneously. And that's unprecedented in this industry. Well, uh, also, you talk about the best value, but if you do that, then you've got to buy from Huawei. They're the cheapest. We all know it. But some of us question whether buying from Huawei means that Huawei, Huawei hears, therefore the communists hear everything that we say. Uh, it certainly, I wouldn't put it past them because those companies are really delicated, are supposed to be dedicated to spying. What do you do when the, the lowest cost producer of, of equipment is Huawei, but they may not be such a great uh, uh, actor? Well, our biggest suppliers are Ericsson and Nokia, um, and we're planning to expand our 5G network with our existing suppliers. And with our existing suppliers, we have a synergy pool on the network side that we see line of sight to $26 billion in synergy just from the network side, $43 billion overall. So this merger, as we're planning it with our current partners, is something that will unlock the potential of massive scale, finally positioning us at a scale comparable to AT&T and Verizon uh, but with, you know, obviously a culture and a brand and a value proposition that is so much more attractive. Mike, uh, the new company obviously still owned a, a great deal by Deutsche Telekom, uh, T-Mobile's longtime parent, also by SoftBank. SoftBank, though, seems to be uh, talking about potentially selling some of their stakes sooner than might have been anticipated. Is that your understanding? Will SoftBank be selling Sprint shares into the market sooner than might have been thought? Well, you know, you'll have to ask them that. I, we're delighted to have SoftBank as a parent company, along with Deutsche Telekom. Uh, today, we welcomed Marcella Claré and Ron Fisher from SoftBank to our board of directors. Uh, I think we're going to make a great team. Uh, but you'll have to ask them about their long-term plans. I see huge potential here for us. Um, with Deutsche Telekom and with SoftBank and then here in North America with TMUS to build some very interesting collaborations and, you know, cross-oceanic -oce synergies. So, you know, I, I, I really like the potential of this as we can collaborate um, with partners at a global scale now. Um, so we're, we're very, very excited to have them as a part of the family. Does the, uh, Mike, does the Sprint brand go away quickly here? The main uh, brand, obviously, will be T-Mobile. And, you know, during the crisis here, we're not going to make big changes. So think about the, you know, summer time frame as being when we start to unify under the T-Mobile brand and market uh, with all of our stores and all of our advertising and all of our offers in a more unified way. You know, Midsummer, 
we haven't picked a date yet, but that's certainly always been our intention. Uh, that doesn't mean the Sprint brand will go away completely. We haven't made those decisions yet. You know, the Sprint brand has an incredible legacy, uh, but we believe that um, right now in wireless, it makes all the sense in the world to unify under the T-Mobile brand. So the company is called T-Mobile, and the flagship brand of the company right. is T-Mobile. And, Mike, I look forward to many uh, future appearances by you, we hope, certainly, as Mr. Ledger used to join us. Final question for me here, though, something we used to talk about often before the current crisis. How will 5G impact people at home, especially now, given all the streaming that we're doing? Do you believe you will have a competitive product in 5G wireless into the home that competes with, well, right now, the cable uh, that I am using to connect to the Internet? Well, first of all, David, it's great to talk to you, and um, I'd love to come back and talk more. You've followed this merger so well. It seems like you've broken every major story, uh, including the fact that, that I would become CEO. So uh, thank you for following the company so closely. Yes, you know, 5G, um, obviously, it's more important now than ever because what we're, what we're really realizing during social distancing is the, these connections are more important than ever. And remember, our competitors have 5G strategies that are so different from what new T-Mobile can do. Verizon continues to talk about millimeter wave deployments in sporadic places here and there around the country, where we intend to cover 99% of this country, not just with low-band 5G like standalone T-Mobile could do, but with broad and deep, rich 5G that's totally transformational. 99% of the country, 90% of Americans, in fact, will have 100 megabits per second or better. The national average will be better than 450 megabits per second. So this is game-changing, and it's one of the reasons we've worked so hard to bring this day about.